Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And what a difference a day makes. Volatility is very much uh, part of the game right now and we've seen the markets absolutely sell off only to then rally up very strongly, then sell off, then to rally up quite strongly. And that's pretty much where we are today. So yesterday pretty much brought an 8% rally in the crude oil markets that came pretty much out of nowhere, just on some vague chatter from an OPEC member about potential production cuts, the usual um, kind of rumors that go across the internet. Um, the crude oil price then slightly began to decrease, but not before it brought equity markets up uh, kicking and screaming with it, with most global equity markets actually up around about 2% to end the session. Now, while crude oil actually ended up coming down that little bit, um, global equities managed to hold on to those gains, and that's pretty much where we are this morning. Maybe just ever so slightly teetering on the edge there. Now, I wouldn't expect there to be too much volatility today because tonight we've got the FOMC, and that's at 7 p.m. UK time. Now, we're not really expecting the Fed to come out with any surprise rate increases, uh, but it's all about the, uh, the Fed statement that comes along with it. And uh, many commentators really believe that is going to be a lot more dovish than usual. As in, towards the late 2015, you know, they, they raised rates and, oh, we're going to do, you know, maybe three or four or maybe even five rate hikes in 2016. The way the world markets are right now, that seems to be a little bit precarious uh, and very, very unlikely, but you never know what might happen. Uh, US dollars are already that little bit stronger than they would potentially like it. Looking at cable, you know, cable is trading down at one spot 42. Um, Euro dollar is actually putting up a bit more of a fight, but the, the dollar generally is one of the best performing currency pairs out there. And I don't think it's in the US interest to have the dollar too strong against those basket of currencies for obvious competitive globalization reasons. Now. Where we are with the markets today is FOMC, obviously, Bank of Japan on Friday. Uh, we're probably not going to see a huge amount of volatility in equities and FX until FOMC is out of the way. But let's look at things from a technical perspective, um, because I think a lot of these markets are very, very close to, uh, to some interesting support levels. And for everything else, you're pretty much just going to have to wait later on today. OK, so without further ado, let's go ahead and have a look at the US 30 to kickstart things off. So as discussed, uh, this is where we are with the US 30, a real decent bounce yesterday. You, you can see how much lower we actually were and how volatile these markets are. Uh, we've had pretty much a failure to break up that little bit higher. It did push on higher only to settle pretty much the same level as it did there on Friday. Um, so where we are today, Doji Formation, 74% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Bullish crossover on the uh, MACD. You've got a buy signal on the slow stochastic, but no follow through in the price action. Then looking at the UK 100, uh, and where we are with the UK 100 just now is we're making a series of lower highs right here. So you've got a high, a lower high, a lower high. Decent turnaround in the candle yesterday. Still trading below those moving averages. Uh, and if we have a look at the client sentiment, 63% of CMC market clients are currently long, hoping for, for a rebound. You've got 5880 as a potential support level. Uh, crossover on the MACD, other technicals are relatively neutral. Japan, 225, 77% of CMC market clients are short, and we're at a potential major resistance level uh, at 17,161. Failure to break and close above that so far. We're trading below both moving averages. The other technicals, they did give a buy signal, but that was a number of sessions ago. Uh, they're relatively neutral at the moment. Then having a quick look at dollar yen. 55% of CMC Marcus clients are currently long by position value. So very interesting candle yesterday. So lots of fear returned. So the yen was well bid. Um, then it got pushed back up. Uh, I think, I'm not sure if traders are really thinking the Bank of Japan is going to do anything on Friday or not. Um, we talk about this a lot in these sessions, but a lot of the central banks, they don't really want to do quantitative easing if they can help it. Uh, they really want to save that for when they're really in dire straits. Uh, and the fact that they, the yen was making some decent gains, even though it is a safe haven currency, that leads me to believe that uh, it seems to be more likely than likely. Um, but we are hugging that 21 period SMA right now. Uh, 118 spot 25 is a, is a major uh, support level. And that's been in play for quite, quite some time. You know, it was a broken support acting as a resistance and it, keep, it keeps flip-flopping around that area. So 118.25 is strategically important. So then have a good look at West Texas crude. <laughs> 
And that is some serious volatility right there. Look at this crude price went all the way up to 31.57. And that level of 31.57 obviously is of significance. Also quite important uh, to that 21 period SMA. Got pushed all the way back down. It's really ugly from a candle perspective, actually. Doji formation, 58% of CMC clients are currently short. So they're anticipating a move back down to 26.73. Uh, again, I would be very surprised if we actually saw any major aggressive moves on any of the major products until after the FOMC. So moving on to gold. Gold's been having a fantastic run recently as uh, those uh, extra rate hikes laid out by the Fed members at the end of, uh, of, of November seem less and less likely in this current market environment. And people are taking a view that there, there's going to be less than the four that are laid out. Uh, if we get two rate hikes in 2016, that's probably a bit more realistic than, than four. Um, but let's see how the macro data comes out of the US. Now, you can see where we are just now. This is the highest level that we've been in 2016. Proper technical breakout yesterday, no fall through this morning. The tips of these candles have got a high and a lower high, so make of that as you will. But 1,113 uh, spot 40, that is the broken resistance now potentially acting as support. So finishing up with the uh, euro dollar and GBP USD, euro dollar is very boring at the moment, still trading within this potential uh, descending triangle formation. We're just waiting for a decent breakout one end or the other. And finishing up with GBP USD, uh, decent rally yesterday off the lows, failure to break above these uh, tips of these candles here, no follow through today. 88% of CMC markets clients are currently short. One spot, 42, 30 is still the level to keep your eye on. So market calendar time, right. What do we have here? Well, we've already had UK house data, nah, nothing special. Uh, but then we've got our new home sales. You've got your crude oil inventory data. That's, that's gonna be pretty important if you're trading crude today. Gasoline stocks were much higher than expected again yesterday. That helped to cause that extra sell-off in uh, crude yesterday. If that comes out much higher than expected again today, that could cause a little bit of a sell-off. Um, but then you've got the FOMC. Don't forget that. It's very, very important. Uh, Thursday, UK GDP, German CPI, uh, durable goods and employment claims from the US. And to finish up things on Friday, you've got CPI, U uh, Eurozone CPI, US GDP, and University of Michigan Sentiment Index. Well, guys, thank you very much for listening. Very good luck with your trading. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.